Hello. Today we will be using Jenkins to perform code reviews with the LDRA tool suite. As you can see on the screen, we have our Safe Utilities project, which contains several C files, an assortment of header files, as well as two batch scripts, one to build and one to clean, which we will call later when we are setting up our Jenkins project. So we can also see that Jenkins is currently running as a service and we'll now open Jenkins up through the browser. We can see that we are running on our local host machine through port 8081. And to start with, we will need to do our system configuration. So we'll have a look into settings. Now we have two features that we'll be looking at today. We have configure system and we also have manage plugins. We'll start with manage plugins today as we'll need to install our code review plugin. We'll then navigate to the advanced section, scroll down to deploy plugin. We'll need to choose a file and we will see that the folder is within our LDRA tool suite installation and the utils folder and then the Jenkins folder. And within there we have a choice of two HPI files, which are two separate plugins. One is for our code coverage and one is for code review. Today we'll be discussing the code review plugin However, the code coverage plugin is also discussed in an alternate video. So we'll select the code review plugin today. We'll press deploy. I have already got this installed on my machine, so I will not press deploy at this time. I will now return to the settings. I will select configure system. I will scroll down. We will now first need to set up several environment variables within our global properties section. The first one is to do with our LDRA license file. As we can see, that is assigned to our local machine. We'll also need to set up one pointing to our testbed.ini, which is the backbone of our tool suite operation. This is version specific, so depending on what version of the tool suite you are currently operating, you will need to make sure that the ini file is correct. We will scroll down slightly further. We have a section for our LDRA code review. We'll need to specify the general tool suite location. Yet again, important to iterate how version specific this is. The same again with our any file path. We also have a default tool type, which we'll need to specify. You can see that there are two options here. We have the tool suite defaulted, or we have our point product LDRA rules. So make sure to select the correct one, depending on what you have licensed. Once that is completed, we'll then need to select apply and then press save. Now that that is completed, our settings are configured. We will need to bring in our project. So we will select new item. We will give it a name, select freestyle project. Okay that. And now we are able to configure our project settings. So as opposed to configuring our Jenkins settings, we're now configuring the individual project settings. So we'll scroll down. We will need to add several pre-build steps and a post-build action as well. So we'll start with our pre-build steps. We will select execute Windows batch command. I will paste in my batch command now. There we go, I'll delete some extra spaces. We can see here with the batch command that we have our start weight. We have our TB build import.exe. Now build import is how we bring in projects into our tool suite. We have the build.bat command, which I mentioned before. And we also have our source directory, which is mentioned there. We'll then need to add a second build step, which is LDRA code review. We will need to specify our file path for our build target file which I will also paste in. As you can see, the project name, safeutilities.exe.btf, the build target file. We'll also need to specify our work area path to be version specific, which you can see there. We need to guarantee that the tool suite is selected unless we are using the point products, in which then we would choose LDRA rules. We need to specify our tool suite installation again and make sure that the INI is correct, which it is. 
Now, once we have configured these pre-build commands, we will then need to move on to a post-build action. We need to select publish code review analysis results. Scroll down. We can see that the default file set is already included. So we will leave that there. We'll now select apply and save. And now our project settings are set up. What we will do now is we will perform our first build of the project. So we will go to build now, select this, and the build will appear on this section. We will also get a time predicted the remaining time. And we can see that we are now built. Now, depending on your project size, this time may take longer. It may be a lot shorter. It does depend on obviously how many files you're bringing in and so on and so forth. What I'll do now is just show the console output that we can select. We can see here that we have our files. We can see that we have our violations that it's discovered. We can see that we have a success. And we can see various other information such as report generation if you wish to do that. So we'll return to our dashboard. We can see that the project was a success building. We can see that we have no failed builds. This icon will change depending on that. And then we will select our project. We can see that the LDRA violations tab has now appeared on our project page. We also have several bits of information. We can see our last build, our last stable build, successful build, completed build. They would all be displayed here in our build history section. What we'll do now is we'll select our LDRA violations tab. We can see here that we have a total of 10 violations within our set. This is distributed between the three C files that we have. If I wanted to, I could click on the file and we can see those that are included within that file. If I wanted to then click on the violation itself, I could do that. It would take us to the file and also the line which the violation occurs on. Once we had then attended to that and fixed that violation, or we had excluded it, we could then come back in, build again, and the violations would update. So if we go back into our violations section, we can see there is other tabs. So the next tab shows the list of violations itself. We have a bit more detail as well, which shows you information of the name, it shows you the actual standard that we've gone by as well, as well as several rule references. And there is more tabs showing similar information. As usual, if you require any more information regarding this feature or any other service that we provide, please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.